decorated. Truthfully, back. It's week 13, and we've got an AFC West showdown. Kansas City's looking to make it 12 straight wins over Denver. Can the Broncos snap the streak? Find out next. From one of the loudest venues in the NFL, there's a look at Arrowhead Stadium here in Kansas City. The scene just a few moments ago, predictably loud and raucous here in KC as their beloved Chiefs took the field, and they are set to match up with the Denver Broncos. Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Chiefs ball club. They come in off the extended break from the bye. I think it was much needed as well. You play two, two and a half months, you're ready for some time off to get set for the home stretch. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, their long winning streak finally came to an end last week. A disappointing game for them, but still a heck of a run. Indeed it was. What a great job by them putting together a streak. Now let's see how they rebound after his defeat. Touchback is at sales over the end line. Patrick Mahomes now in his fifth season with the Chiefs, ready to bring out this high-powered Kansas City offense for the first time. You talk about the pause that refreshes. I think it's come at a perfect time of the year for them, hasn't it? You know, they, it's the season is starting to wind down, got a little bit of a break. But how about the guy calling the signals? He's got to be excited about that because now he didn't just get a game plan for one week. He was able to work on it for two weeks. I can't wait to see if they have anything special in, in store for him today. They'll run for the first time with Clyde Edwards-Alaire. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. From the 30 on second down, Mahomes. Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. On fourth down, Tommy Townsend to punt for Kansas City. K.J. Hamler deep for the Broncos. Now a hit and a loose football. And it's picked up by the Chiefs. And they are going to set up shot at the 32-yard line. And maybe getting a little too cute there on the punt return. Sometimes they forget Paramount holding on to that football. I really do believe most of the return guys think to themselves, when I get the ball, I'm going to make the play that's going to change yeah, the I'm game. I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it. And you love that they have that attitude, but your point is so well taken. What do you have to do? First and foremost, hold on to it. Take care of the football. That's all he needed to do. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Mahomes now to throw. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. And that is caught. Touchdown, Kansas City. Tyreek Hill, his 17th touchdown now on the season. And the Chiefs are going to take a first quarter lead. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height, 
or even speed. They use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever. There it results in a touchdown. Harrison Butker is on for the extra point. And his kick is good to make it 7-0 KC. They certainly made quick work of that. Ultra quick work. One of the fastest drives you'll ever see. Just one play resulting in the touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. K.J. Hamler returning it. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. With the Denver offense ready to take over for the first time. Get a look at their eighth-year quarterback. His first season as a Bronco, though, Teddy Bridgewater. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. three as he takes this up near the 25. Well, this defense, very strong in that victory from a week ago. Yeah, what stood out to me on tape, the way they were flying to the football. So that tells me that they've got all their assignments down and they're playing with extreme confidence. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. First of all, the So a little extra on top of the big play there. It's tough for guys rushing the passer, but you have to know when the ball is gone. And if you listen, officials will tell you ball's gone. He didn't pull up. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. Well, this defense, Charles, really played well in that win a week ago. But we certainly had a nice conversation with the defensive coordinator, didn't we? And what we heard, I like what we did, but we definitely need more pressure on the quarterback this week. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Well, this defense, very strong in that victory from a week ago. It's a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win. But definitely And he's got his tight end fan. Touchdown, Broncos. Noah Fant, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Broncos are an extra point away from tying the football game. And that was a beautiful ball right there as he waited for his tight end to come uncovered in the end zone. So give him points for patience as well. Delivered it right where it needed to be for six points. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. A drive there of just four plays, and it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. So I'll leave it at 7 now as they kick it away. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. And you figure this should be a healthy, arrested, a focused unit, and they're working on a good winning streak. They had the week off last week. This is really a team, Charles, that should be in top four. I would agree absolutely with that. What coaches worry about, what organizations worry about, though, is overconfidence. They've been playing so well, and now they've had that extra time off. And we've seen teams come back off the open week and come out flat. So what a lot of good coaches do is they kind of game plan for that with their teams on defense. They may blitz more in the beginning to get them going. On offense, they may go more up tempo. Anything to get them out of that lethargy right at the beginning. 
Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A first down there on a pickup of 25. That certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Mahomes firing complete. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yard. This is caught by Hill for a Chiefs touchdown. Tyreek Hill with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Chiefs have taken the lead. Patrick Mahomes, he can do everything seemingly, and that time he just reared back and let it fly. And I'm telling you, nothing will let up a crowd more than a play like that. Here in the stadium, all eyes were on the receiver streaking downfield, and you know everyone was thinking, throw it, he's open. What a connection there for the touchdown. And the final number on that throw, boy, it traveled an even 69 yards. Extra point by Butker is on target, and that makes the score 14 to 7. A four-play drive spanning 80 yards, and it winds up with the Chiefs hitting Painter. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. Hamler now to return it. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos, and they're hoping to redo their efforts of the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the gun, Bridgewater. And that's checked down to Gordon. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And I like the idea here. Get the ball in his hands, even if it's in the passing game. Three catches a week ago, and he does a nice job here to pick up yardage. From the 25 on second down, Bridgewater. This is the tight end fan. Bridgewater to fan, first down Broncos. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Corner 14 7, our score. Broncos football as we begin quarter number two, as they've got it with a first and ten. Now the handoff comes to Gordon. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. 
I thought maybe when he caught he'd have a good chance of getting that first down, but that's a nice job of holding him up and preventing him from getting to the sticks. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. Tyreek Hill back deep for Kansas City. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. It's just a 32-yard punt with no return. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. Out comes Patrick Mahomes in the Chiefs offense. He's showing off that arm, showing it off very well. They've got the lead. Don't forget, though, about the protection he's had. The protection's been good. And I'll guarantee you, he hasn't forgotten about it at all because that's keeping him clean in the pocket, allowing him to step into throws and make those deep passes come true. I mean, it's just been beautiful for him to do. But guess what? In the huddle, on the sidelines, guaranteed, he's thanking those big guys up front for keeping him safe. I have a feeling he made by dinner. <laughs> Indeed, entertaining to relive some of those deep balls. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Second down, back to Edwards Alaire. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. Throwing on first down is Mahomes. Well, Mahomes can't get away, and down he goes. Von Miller in there to get him, and on the season now, that is nine sacks for him. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. Here's Edwards Alaire. And to the 42 yard line here and brought down there. They'll wind up getting 10 back there as it'll leave them with a third and five. Working from the gun, Mahomes. He is going to find Hill here. And he's got some space here. And they're going to have this way down deep in Denver territory. That's a gain of nearly 40 yards on third and medium to pick up the first. Well, fair to say that when you're looking at guys that can run like the wind, you often find them at the wide receiver position, and that was special there. And sometimes you see big plays develop on a route like this, a slam route, and the object, very simple. Get the ball to your receiver in stride. This one was right on the money. He didn't miss a beat. And then it's off to the races, and there he goes. And his top speed, as computed by Next Gen Stats, 21.6 miles per hour. So here's a first and 10 now, down inside the 20. Shotgun snap to Mahomes. He'll get it once more into the hands of Hill. And the Chiefs are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. They'll run with Edwards Alaire, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. And really, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Second down and goal. Mahomes, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. The 20. 10, and he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Bronco defense has a touchdown. So they had a good drive going, a chance to build on this first half lead, but now you kind of feel like we got a new ball game. And you wonder what the discussion will be now at halftime because I think we were headed towards one. Now it's a different discussion altogether. One side optimistically, the other side wondering what could have been.
This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Callaway, the return man. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Tyreek Hill making his way back out towards the huddle. Making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. He's getting big yardage with each and every one of them. And a missed tackle there as he pushes forward for a gain of four. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll run. It's Edwards Alaire. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. The Chiefs now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Here's Mahomes to throw. And going deep for Hill. And this is caught inside the five. And in for the Chiefs touchdown. The one thing that we know for sure, do not question the arm strength of Patrick Mahomes, one of the strongest around. And that is absolutely demoralizing for a defense because you've got the offense on the ropes. It's third down. You try to get off the field and then wham. You have a letdown in the secondary, and you give up a big one. And that throw, wow, 72 yards in the air, according to Next Gen Stats. Butker now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's capped off with a Kansas City touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Broncos going to get one more possession in this first half. And with 25 seconds to go, we'll, we'll see how they want to play this. And just 25 seconds to go in the half now as they've got it first and 10. Throwing is Bridgewater. He's got his 6'5 receiver. That's Tim Patrick. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. To throw again on second down, Bridgewater. And down he goes. The pressure getting to Bridgewater. Now the Broncos are going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Bridgewater. This is Gordon on the dump off. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Here's Hill on the return. 31 yards on the punt there, and there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. And with Mahomes under center, anything's possible. Watch out for the deep ball. Final shot before the half for Mahomes. He's going to take a shot at the end zone. Why not? And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by Kyle Fuller. And he will be brought down as time has now run out on this first half of action. So we've come upon halftime here in Arrowhead with the Chiefs on top as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. We're starting to get near the home stretch of this NFL season. It's week 13, so let's get an update on what's going on. We begin out in the AFC, two teams who drafted franchise quarterbacks in 2020. The LA Chargers taking on Cincinnati. And it is the Chargers out in front as those two creep towards halftime. Mike Williams, a touchdown reception. From there, we're off to check out another game. And you can see there is the visiting Colts who have the lead in that one. T.Y. Hilton, 
a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get down to Miami to see what's going on with the Dolphins. And that game all tied up as they host the visiting Giants. Moving on, let's take a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Broncos. And they did not do much at all in terms of throwing the football in those first two quarters. That's going to need to improve if they want to erase this deficit. Meanwhile, for the Chiefs, we check out their numbers on the ground as they'll try to keep the momentum going into the second half. The final adjustments taking place here for both of these squads. They're about ready for the second half in Kansas City. And for the Colts, we rejoin Brandon and Charles. Okay, coach, appreciate it. A one touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. It'll be the Broncos getting the football first in this second half as they trail, and we are back underway. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Bronco offense ready to begin this third quarter play. And they're still very much in this game, although they do trail. What's the game plan, Charles, for the second half? It might be a little counterintuitive because most people will think losing equals passing the ball more, but I'd establish the running game. They kind of went away from it in the first half. I think if they get back in balance, it'll help them when they put the ball back in the air. The pass there over the middle to start things out. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Bridgewater to throw it. Open man, he completes it to Judy. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Ooh. And he's got it. What a catch on the sideline. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, dialing up that play call certainly meant that he grabbed a little extra shot of courage on that one because normally on third and short, you're just trying to move the sticks, get the ball just past that line of scrimmage. Instead, they take the big shot downfield, and it pays off. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. Now a handoff. This is Gordon. They had the huge play last time. Here it is a much smaller gain of two. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Third down, Bridgewater. And that is incomplete. The Kansas City defense tough to throw on there. And now it's fourth down. The kick by McManus is good. And that'll bring him back within four. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. So here's the Chiefs offense ready for their first reps in half number two. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, you get a little confidence in him and let him fling another one. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Catch is made by Hardman. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That'll 
be marked as a 27-yard pickup. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. They'll run here with Edwards Hilaire. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 53 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 41. They go play fake. Mahomes. This pass going to be caught by Hardman. And they'll wind up getting this with all the way down inside the 20. A really nice gain of 25 yards. It certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. He's got Burton here. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. They'll try to run with Edwards Hilaire. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. Now a stoppage, and oh, we've got Chubb shaken up on the play. We'll step aside and get an update when we return to KC. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? And Mahomes misfires again, and it's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10 and to the 12. That's where it stops. The return is halted at the 12-yard line. Well, this has been a bit of a tough game to figure out when it comes to him throwing the football. He's got the three touchdown passes, but now, Charles, this is a third interception. And those aren't really numbers that you'd like to see balance out. In a normal ledger sheet, if you can balance everything, you feel good about your day. But as a quarterback, you need your ratio to be more like three touchdown passes to one interception. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Following the interception, here's Bridgewater. Man open, he's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Here's Gordon. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. Three quarters have come and gone. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. We're back now in KC. It's the Broncos trailing, but they do have possession of the football as we begin quarter number four. Short yardage, Bridgewater. He's got a man, it's Sutton that's complete. And he will have a Broncos first down. They needed four, he doubled that. He wound up getting eight. Bridgewater to Sutton, first down, Denver. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. A first down throw for Bridgewater. He'll let this go deep for Sutton. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he did not reel it in. He was looking to go back to Sutton there, but it's going to be second down. Throwing Bridgewater. That's caught over the middle by Fan. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 
Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll step aside and get an update when we return to Arrowhead. A pair of first downs gives him a first and 10 up at the 44. Here's Bridgewater. Sets up the screen to Gordon. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Seven yards there on the first down screen play. Four receivers in the formation here. Three to the left, one to the right, second and three. Out of the gun, Bridgewater. And that'll be incomplete. Something we haven't really seen much of from him, an incomplete pass. Yeah, last week he finished at 70%. This week he's up over 80%. I don't know how you slow him down. Pass rush is usually the best way because a quarterback on his back usually can't complete a pass. Bridgewater from the gun on third down. And that's complete. Albert Okue Buna. And he will have the Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 12 yards on third down as the drive rolls on. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed too. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And movement by one of the Broncos up front, and in comes the flag. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Now Bridgewater. Throw to the right here to Gordon. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively. And the key to any screenplay is space to work. And there was none to be found there. And they tackled for just a short game. The second down attempt there knocked down as it leaves the quarterback's hand and it's incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read. And by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. From the shotgun, it's Bridgewater. A pass for Sutton is intercepted. Picked up by Mike Hughes. I'm not sure I'm absolutely crazy about that play call there. I mean, it's only a one-score game, so is it really time to go bombs away and try and make a big play? I think you can take some underneath stuff and still move it downfield. The Chiefs offense and Tyreek Hill heading back out onto the field. And I think we both agreed he could have a really good game with this matchup, but over 200 yards now. I don't think we saw it as that good. And I think what really makes it special is when games like this are occurring, it's not just getting locked in and in the zone and on a roll. It's continuing to adjust throughout the game because, you know, the defense is kicking coverages towards him, trying their best to slow him down, and he keeps getting the better of them. Yeah, whatever they've done, it hasn't worked. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. Completes it to Hardman. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Ahead of the chains now, second and two. Mahomes now to throw. Throw right side, gonna be caught by Hardman. Oh, no, he lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And a very good return as he'll take it all the way up to the 40-yard line. Well, that takeaway, partner, right there, that's a combination of coaching, 
execution and absolute belief because a lot of guys will look at the scoreboard and go, ah, this thing's pretty well done. But they still thought to themselves, if we could make a play, we give our team, we give our teammates a chance to win it. And that's exactly what they did. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. And at this stage in the fourth, they need to work this into the end zone. A field goal doesn't do much. We'll see if they can cash in following the fumble recovery. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. From just shy of midfield, Bridgewater. And down he goes. The pressure getting to Bridgewater. You got to give him points for the attempt, but there's just a wave of pressure there. A host of people in the area. Evades a few, but couldn't evade all of them. Third and long now after the sack. And we'll see if Bridgewater has a response. So it's Bronco football as we get you reset here. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. Bridgewater, he's going to let it fly. Oh, a contested ball here, and it's going to be caught. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's checked down to Gordon. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Here's Bridgewater. Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Chiefs. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. Well, that simply is a missed opportunity. They're in position. If they take the ball downfield and score, they got a chance to win the game. Instead, they cough it up. I don't think next week at practice is going to be a whole lot of fun for him. On the other side, no bigger time to force a turnover when you've got that small lead. Yeah, and when you look at it from the, the offense's perspective. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Bryce Callahan. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Bronco defense has a touchdown. This game, it's been defensively oriented on both sides. So I guess it stands to reason that the play of the game comes on defense. So it's my kind of game. You know that. That's anytime right. we that's have a right. defensive battle. But that, as you said, it stands to reason that's the way the game tilted. Someone had to make a big play. And the way the defenses were dominating, that's exactly what we got. McManus's point after is good. So it's now a three-point game here in the closing stages as a field goal now can only tie it. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Here comes Mahomes and the Chiefs. Down 24-21, a minute eight to go. The late fumble gives him unexpected new life as they come up first down. Mahomes to throw it. And this one caught by Travis Kelsey. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Boy, he ran free there after the catch as that winds up going for 38. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the... And that is caught at the 10-yard line. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. That one goes for 30 yards. Well, make that now two completions for him on this drive. And these aren't ordinary completions. They're big ones. Yeah, these are the types that make a secondary talk to each other and not in a good way. Oftentimes pointing fingers. Hey, who's got it? Someone cover it. That type of indecision can open up to even more big plays. 
Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Here's Mahomes. Now a swing pass. It's Edwards Alaire. The Chiefs will use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 22 ticks to go in the fourth. And the ball smack dab on the five yard line. Here's second and goal. A shotgun snap and a give to Edwards Alaire. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. For the lead, here's third and goal. Mahomes. And it's caught. And he's across for the touchdown. And it's likely the game winner here in the closing stages. So for those of little faith, guess what? It got done. They now have the lead with that touchdown this late in the contest. I wonder if that was a play they were holding or a play that they just knew would work from past experience. Well, I just saw it in their eyes on the sideline before starting that last drive, and they did. You're right. They got it done. Looks like they're going to be the winners. Extra point by Bunker is on target. And it would appear, barring some late heroics, they're going to get out of here with a come-from-behind victory. Touchdown, here's Bucker on to kick it away. Hamler now to return it. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. Critical condition here, obviously. Got to hope to get something quick right and then maybe take that shot deep. And once they do take the big shot, you've got to worry on defense. Of course, no one getting behind the defense and making an easy throw. But nowadays, it's not just the ball being tipped in the air and people in the end zone in a cluster. It's that guy that's short in the end zone who comes up and ends up making the play because he goes unguarded. So there's a lot to think about if you're playing defense in this situation. We'll see if they can cover all their bases. Now one final throw here is incomplete, and that is how this one will come to an end. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly? Even though we both knew it was a long shot. So for Kansas City, they continue to keep pace for that first round bye as they move to 11-1. And, and they'll get another home date next week as the Raiders will come to town. Meanwhile, for Denver, they fall to 6-6 six and six now on the campaign. And they'll get a home date next week against the Detroit Lions.